Join us right now on the Mercedes-Benz Vans phone line. He's a former NFL general manager, now the executive director of the Fritz Pollard Alliance, which works to ensure equal opportunity in the football industry. Pleased to be joined by Rod Graves. Rod, thank you very much for making some time for us here today. Uh, how are you doing as you come up on a, uh, a very busy time of year for you? Well, I'm doing great, Tom. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, been looking forward to being on today, and uh, things are going fairly well. Uh, just a bit disappointed in the process uh, exhibited over the last several days um, uh, with the hiring of, of Coach Saturday. Well, tell me about this, Rod. And, and by the way, it is strange to hear you call him Coach Saturday, a title that uh, 48 hours ago definitely did not exist. Uh, the Rooney Rule, which of course is just one of many uh, policies that are in place here, does not apply to interim coaches. However, uh, a point that I've, I've made on NFL Network over the past couple of days is the comment by Jim Irsay saying Jeff Saturday was the only person for the job is kind of exactly why the Rooney Rule exists in the big picture, which is to prevent people from just saying, I know this one guy He's the one without considering different viewpoints, different candidates. As you watch this play out, and I don't know if you had any advance notice, Rod, of what the Colts had planned, but what, what was going through the mind of yourself uh, and your constituents that you represent? Well, Tom, let me first say that owners have a right to select whoever they choose to lead their clubs. And uh, it remains to be seen, obviously, whether Mr. Ursay made the right decision for his organization. Only he um, has the, the, the understanding and the right uh, for that decision, and, and he made it. My issue, and, and with those that uh, I represent as part of the executive director of the Fritz Pollard Alliance, is in the process. Um, we can talk for quite a while about the insensitivity and the disregard for people who have devoted their entire careers to the profession. Uh, It's especially hurtful to coaches of color who have found that the road to head coach positions has been, you know, long filled with obstacles. But again, we could talk, you know, for a good amount of time with respect to that. My issue is with the league's inconsistency on the question of hiring and fair opportunities. Uh, The the league has a policy uh, which is known as the Equal Opportunity Employment Policy, which promises fair, open, and competitive hiring practices. Uh, I do not believe that the hiring of an interim coach should be excluded from that policy. And I understand that uh, exceptions are made uh, for in-house decisions, but any time a organization goes outside of, of, uh, uh, of their full-time employees to hire another individual, especially for a uh, what's considered a primary position, then it should be opened up to the Rooney Rule. And let me just further say that the Rooney Rule are just words on paper. We don't have a rule or a policy without enforcement or commitment to the spirit of the rule. And that's where we need to step back and examine where we are as a league to really ask ourselves whether or not we're truly committed. We are not. The, 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 the Rooney Rule exists on paper. It's just words. It's hollow if we're not willing to enforce it. And, again, once I, I, I uh, as I said before, uh, I do not believe that an interim position uh, is worthy of exception when you're stepping outside of the organization to fill a role, a primary role at, at that. And now we know, Rod, via Jeff Saturday, that he was called about the job with no experience above the high school level while Frank Reich was still employed, while Frank Reich was literally still wearing the headset on the sideline. 
Sunday against the Patriots. I would ask you this because you made your position very clear on interim coaches. Ideally, because these things move quickly, right? And that's kind of always the cover that's given, which is, well, we have to do something. We have to move quickly. We've got a game next week. We've got to go. What would the ideal process be from an interim coaching perspective? And and this hiring from the outside does not happen very often, but even the interim opportunities from within, what is the process that should take place at a time that, listen, Jeff Saturday is getting a chance for eight games to show he can be an NFL head coach, and there's a lot of other assistant coaches around the league that have not gotten that opportunity, regardless of their color. Well, again, I, I think, you know, as we've normally seen and, and, and when decisions are made, uh, Tom, uh, within the season, uh, that uh, you know, you first look to your staff, you look to your coordinators, uh, you look to position coaches. Uh, we saw that with Steve Wilkes in Carolina. Uh, you know, it, there are opportunities uh, certainly within your staff, and again, that's the the owner's prerogative. If he is not satisfied with those that are on the staff then he can go outside of the staff. The the process, obviously, is much more engaging once you go outside of the staff and if you have to apply the Rooney Rule. But, again, uh, he certainly has an opportunity to look to more qualified coaches on his staff. Uh, But, again, if he doesn't uh, feel comfortable in that regard, uh, then he has to go to an, through an expensive process, in my opinion, which involves the Rooney Rule. Rod Graves, the executive director of the Fritz Pollard Alliance, joining us here on the Rich Eisen Show on the Mercedes-Benz Vans Hotline. Uh, my issues, Rod, in general with the hiring process and the inequities that we've seen in terms of the numbers are, are really threefold. It is, number one, there seems to be, and there's an increasing actual number of mandates in terms of what you have to uh, interview for, the positions, all the way down. That seems at times to be the cover for allowing people to say, we're going to check these boxes. We're making more boxes, but we're not actually getting at the root of the issue. Number two, it is raising the awareness of the right coaches, which is something that you do on a daily basis. And the third one, and something that I asked about during the NFL's fall meeting was representation in the room. There are some teams, last year the Broncos were a good example. They had, I believe, 10 people who were a part of their every single head coaching interview. They had women, they had people of color. Uh, There was the Vikings had a very diverse group and interviewing with different departments, different people, different perspectives. There were other teams that had the same three white guys in the room that they've hired every other head coach and general manager. And surprise, surprise, they hired yet another white guy to uh, fill the job. And that's not to say that hiring a a white coach is, is the wrong thing to do, but it's about the representation in the room can provide different perspectives on candidates. And I'm just curious, from your perspective, what is the pushback, if any, if that has been discussed about making sure that there's a diverse group, if not in the decision-making process, at least in the interview process, and making that something that's mandatory or minimum best practices? Well, Tom, that's, uh, I think that's well said. And we know that when you have uh, a diverse committee, if you will, um, in, in, in terms of the interview process, that the likelihood of a diverse candidate obviously uh, being selected is is, is increased. Um, you know, I believe that Roger Goodell has done uh, an admirable job of stressing how important diversity is to the league and to the future uh, of football. I, I believe that opportunities out there should be availed uh, to all people, regardless of color, if you are qualified and competent uh, to lead and, and have the skills to be involved in the game, you should have an opportunity. Uh, it's good business in the long run. Diversity is good business. And uh, our fans are well aware that corporations across the country are growing in, in, in awareness with respect to that. I do believe that teams are better off when opinions and diverse attitudes and, and, and uh, uh, positions of, of, of uh, you know, foresight are all taken into consideration 
and uh, I believe that there's an opportunity to, to certainly engage our fans uh, and our sponsors and, and all of that on those levels. But uh, teams, uh, uh, for whatever reason, are slow to embrace diversity. Some teams, others have done a great job. This is not a total league problem. Uh, this is a, a problem in pockets. And I, I just strongly believe that, uh, you know, there has to be more demand from fans, from sponsors, and from others uh, for, for a more fair and equitable process when it comes to hiring. The NFL has a great game, and I was very much a part of that great game. And uh, I believe that we should be one of the leaders in the industry, not only in sports, but just in business in general. There's no reason why we can't come up with a better, a better and more equitable way of hiring and promoting, regardless of color. And, uh, and so, you know, to see these type of insensitive moves, and again, uh, Mr. Ursay knows what, uh, he, he better knows what's, what's right for his team. But this is a failure of our ability to enforce the policy of fairness. And we had an opportunity to do it, and we did not do it. And that's the problem that I have going forward, and I hope that we can address it going uh, uh, in, in the days and, and weeks to come so that we are more consistent in its application. So looking forward then to this this cycle, Rod, um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion, of course, about Eric Bieniemy, rightly so, in recent years and when he's going to get an opportunity. There's other coaches who are people of color that I think people are getting to know. D'Amico Ryans is certainly a frontline guy, the 49ers defensive coordinator. He was really impressive in his interview with the Vikings. Last year, they wanted him to come in for a second interview, but D'Amico, to his credit, did something not many coaches do, which is said, I don't think I'm ready. I think I need a little bit more time, more seasoning here. Went back to San Francisco, but I anticipate he's going to be in the process. Thomas Brown, who's the assistant head coach uh, of the L.A. Rams, had an interview last year with the Dolphins. I would expect to hear that name again. Potentially Patrick Graham, the, the Raiders defensive coordinator. Who are some of those other coaches that are on your radar do you think really deserve um, a lot of attention and opportunities to at least interview for these jobs coming up in January? Um, there are quite a few outstanding coaches out there. And, you know, some of them are uh, uh, whose teams may not be performing quite as well, but I've stood uh, on the sideline with many of these guys uh, back during the time when I was GM and, you know, I, I know what they're made of. I know what they bring to the table. Uh, you know, I know how well they coach and how hard they coach and how dedicated they are to their profession. And when I look at guys like Vance Joseph and even, you know, Leslie Frazier and Joe Woods at Cleveland or, you know, Jerry Gray at, at Green Bay or, or, you know, there's other names, Pep Hamilton, Rasheen, uh, uh, Raheem Morris, excuse me, you know, you mentioned Patrick Graham, but, you know, you, you've got D'Amico Ryans. I, I, again, there's a number of coaches out there. Uh, you mentioned Thomas Brown, Curtis Motkins at Minnesota. Uh, again, we could go down the list of guys that I think are certainly des deserving of an interview. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, again, I know what these guys bring to the table, and I know that they're very capable of the leadership that's required uh, to have a, a, a successful organization or run a successful team. Last thing for you, Rod, and you've been very generous with your time. We appreciate it. Uh, the text I got from various people, um, black coaches and front office people around the league after Jeff Saturday got the interim job, use words like insulting, embarrassing there is frustration even though i certainly think there's an argument that if you hired a black player who had never coached in the nfl or college you'd have some of the same level of scrutiny but it happens to be that jeff saturday is not he's uh, another white man who's getting an opportunity with a relatively thin resume as a coach you mentioned the process needs to change we need to be committed to a better process What's your message to owners? If you get the opportunity to be in front of people before they go through the search process coming up in, you know, really it's getting going now in terms of vetting candidates, but into January and February as they're going through the process, what is your message to them about what you want the process to be and what you want their mentality to be moving forward? We just want a commitment to fairness. 
you know, a, a commitment to a fair process. Uh, there are only so many jobs, Tom, that are out there, and uh, everyone is not going to be in a position to get a head coaching job or general manager's job or, or you know, president of a club. Uh, we understand that. But it, what we want is a level playing field uh, with respect to uh, evaluating our capabilities, uh, our success, uh, all of those things that we don't get credit for uh, that I, I certainly believe need to be a part of, of uh, the evaluation process. We just want to be able to, uh, you know, engage into a fair process that at least will take into consideration some of those that are capable um, and, and that they have an opportunity to be evaluated. When, when you don't have an opportunity to be evaluated, that's where the rub comes in. And, uh, you know, I, I do believe uh, the insensitivity uh, shown by the coach, it is a punch in the gut, particularly uh, for black coaches and, and for all the professionals out there, regardless, black or white, who devoted their, their careers uh, to professionalism. But, again, he has the right to make that decision. I'm just more concerned about process, and I, we let a lot of people down when we are not willing to enforce a fair and equal process. Rod, thank you very much for your time uh, and your perspective. Uh, I'm sure that we're, we will be talking plenty over the next couple of months here. Tom, thanks for the opportunity. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free. 